All right, here we go. Here's one that I promised to you guys back, oh, about a month, month and a half ago. This is a triple point broadhead. Obviously, you can see this thing's pretty nasty and gummy. This arrow has been through a deer. And it happened in a, a pretty, like, mysterious way. It's not too often that I get deflections. This one kind of deflected on me a little bit. And so I decided to discard the intro that I already filmed on this broadhead and to start over. And a little disclaimer. Crazy things happen when you are bow hunting. I don't care what arrow and what broadhead that you're shooting. Crazy things happen. So I want to give you another rundown of this broadhead. Now, if y'all missed... The video on this head when I tested it out on a hog the first time, that video will be linked down in the description below. And I told you when I tested it out on a hog, I was also going to test it out on a deer. Now, <laughs> it performed unbelievably well. We just had a little crazy something happen as we were passing through the cavity. Anyway, I love this broadhead. My top two reasons why I love it. It is a cut on contact. I wish all mechanicals or all broadheads for that matter were this way so to give you a little uh, perspective if I can get it to focus here maybe I can maybe I can't there there we go so you can see that is a cut on contact tip a lot of broadheads have chisel tips or just basically blunt points and it blows my mind like Schwacker's known for it Sever's known for it there's a lot of heads out there that are known for just having like a chisel kind of tip that's not sharp typically what I do is I modify that broadhead and I give it a sharp -er edge it's a halfway decent kind of half sharp half blunt type of edge but if there's something on a broadhead that I can sharpen up I'm gonna do it and I would say like probably seven or eight times out of ten when I pull a brand new broadhead out of the package it needs a buffing like if it can't easily and lightly shave the hair off of my hand it's getting a file bow hunting is hard enough as it is why would you make it any harder than it has to be it's all about shot placement yes that's with anything and it is about many other variables that we could talk hours about but if you're not doing the little things to increase your odds and to make the odds better for you and you probably shouldn't be bow hunting so number one love this cut on contact tip single bevel cut on contact tip the next thing that i love about this is that it is a fail to open this broadhead cannot fail to open it has these two little wings here you guys can see that here and here this broadhead has absolutely no choice but to open. So I hear people bad-mouthing mechanical broadheads all the time. Oh, they don't open that. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of them are designed in such a way that they have no choice but to open. But me personally, I, I can't recall ever having a broadhead not open. So if I didn't recover an animal, it was because my shot placement was off or I chose the wrong broadhead for the application. Or I, at, the, at some point in time, I just wasn't a very good blood tracker. There's that possibility too. But this broadhead, as soon as it enters, it opens. And it has a, a swivel type feature. So as long as there is resistance or friction, this broadhead will always be open. It will swivel around hard cartilage, bone, uh, things like that shoulder blades you name it and then it will, it'll pass around those things and it will open right back up That's one thing that I uh, also love about this broadhead However, I wish that these blades locked because I don't like that. They are they are able to go back completely closed I feel more comfortable with them locking together and staying open. However, the number two thing uh, Well number three I guess basically that I really love about these broadheads is that there's no bands required there are little magnets down on the inside of here on the inside of that ferrule and so there are no bands you close that blade and that broadhead is closed i clean it up i get the hair off of it i get a, a quick little buffing on that chisel tip and on these mechanical blades right here and it's ready to go right back into my quiver no bands no collars no nothing like that and just like most mechanicals it flies super true so moving forward friday afternoon this past friday i jump in tree stand and it, the wind had blown, been blowing like 20 miles an hour all afternoon well about the time i get settled in camera set up arrow knocked all that good stuff camera set up the wind goes to literally nothing and so i have these deer that come in a bunch of young deer small bugs 
you know, yearlings, so on and so forth. And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm just kind of watching the party or whatever. And then I see this, uh, you know, two-year-old doe, whatever, she comes walking in there. And I had a couple of bucks that were at the feeder, of course. This doe comes in and she, she starts freaking everybody out. She starts spooking everybody. Some of the deer leave. She's bouncing around, running around, doing her thing. Just kind of stressing everybody out, right? Well, since I had a one mile an hour wind, which is basically a non-existent, anytime I would try to move, turn the camera, whatever, you name it, she was on me. Just boop. Looking at me up in my tree stand, and I'm 16 or 18 feet up. She's looking at me. Bam. Anytime I move the camera, anytime I move my arm just a little bit, she's on me. She's on me. She's on me. She's scaring other deer off, and I'm like, you know what? This is how you're going to be. This is what you're going to get. Crazy. <laughs> Here's my size ten and a half foot for comparison. Pretty long. She can't be far. And probably like twenty five feet of this. She's gotta be up in here somewhere. I can't believe she's made it as far as she has doing this. Well, I got her. There's my entry there. I cannot believe she ran as far as she did. Bleeding like she was. I mean, it's just unreal. <coughs> I've never seen a deer bleed like this and run over 100 yards. Well, she did. The exit was out the, basically at the top of the spine. That is, it's so weird to me. I've never seen an arrow turn up and go out like that, but pretty decent sized doe. She'll uh, eat really good, that's for sure. But that's just uh, wild to me. And kind of see how she didn't go out sooner. So I guess I just clipped one lung, top of one lung, and it came out the spine. Strange deal. Oh well, at least we got her. Thank you, Lord. I want to take a look at this triple point, triple point broadhead. And I'm out of breath. I'm gonna have to make it quick because all my batteries are dying. I don't have much left on this, but anyway, no blades appear to be bent. Uh, still super sharp. It was one of the most one of the most wicked blood trails I've seen in a long time. Turned out awesome. I love the magnetic style of these broadheads. Just as easy. Just closing it back up, cleaning it up, sticking it in the quiver, and it's ready to go again. It's not very often that I get to hunt sub freezing temperatures, especially down in the teens like it is. So, oh man, it's awesome and. Uh, Sure beats the heck out of the 100 degree weather that we get all in uh, the summer months. So I'll take this over 104, 105 any day.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope that y'all enjoyed this one. Feels good to be back on the board slinging arrows. It's been a really tough December for me, but it ought to pick up from here on out. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you in just a few days. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong.